Hey everybody. Oh, I see the Kismet's a special guest. Um, I wanted to talk to you about rotating coats. So I've been rotating Sumo's coat since November. He's, um, I'm planning to take him to the specialty in, um, in Illinois, Memorial Day weekend. So I've got a ways to go to keep him in coat. And, um, you know, he's in, he's in nice coat right now. You know, I'd be happy to show him right now. But that's, it's 10 weeks away. And in 10 weeks, he'll be very shaggy. And if I pull it all down in 10 weeks, there may be nothing under it. So this is where I get out my calendar. Um, before now, we've been counting forward. Like, okay, we, we do the first section, then three weeks later we do the next section, then three weeks later we pull the fuzz layer off, three weeks later we pull another fuzz layer off. There's another way you use the calendar when you're rotating a coat and you have a goal, like I do for that specialty. So I counted how many weeks back from that date, that goal. It's 10 weeks from now. Now I know it takes six weeks for hair that I strip to, to sprout, to come through the skin. So it's gonna take, depending on where, two to four weeks after it sprouts for it to be a good length, to be, you know, something to leave a nice tight shoulder or, um, you know, a tight rear, nice tight top line, um, you know, getting, getting the top line to look just how I want it. So now's the perfect time. And so by counting backwards, using my calendar, I know this is the week to take a layer off, a serious layer off, because the layer I take off now is going to be the lion's share of what his, what coat he's going to have in 10 weeks, especially sides of the neck, shoulder, rear, not as much with the sides because this is the last layer probably that I'll take off on the sides because I want plenty of color. I don't want, to, that takes the slowest, that takes the longest to grow in. So I have to stop messing with it sooner than everywhere else. Anyway, one of the ways that I've been stripping him in the past, um, rotating his coat, is I give him a bath and that stands his hair up makes it easy for me to see. I'm probably going to do that uh, tomorrow, but in the meantime, what I've done is I've put some ear powder all through this to help the coat stand up a little bit. And it kind of, you can back comb it, you can back brush it, you can use your hands. And what I'm trying to find here is that there is a layer of hair that's a little bit longer than everything else. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull that out. Now, this is the time where people ask, well, how much do you pull out? Well, since this is gonna be a major layer coming out because this is gonna be a significant part of his hair um, that, that's gonna be his show coat uh, in 10 weeks, I wanna pull quite a bit of it out. So I'm, I'm gonna find lots of, I've got a lot of methods to do that because here's the rub. I need to pull a lot of hair out, but I can't make any holes. So I have to just find what's the longest and pull a little at a time, what's longest, and then do something like bathe the coat. That'll make another layer show up. Gotta pull that layer off little at a time. Do not dig into the coat. That can put a hole in. It's going to take you a long time.
There's different tools you can use for this. I like, um, this is actually, here's the stone that I've been using mostly. This is the exact same style, but it's metal. Um, for me, the weight of it helps me pull the hair a little more consistently. Um, but it's a little more advanced tool. I find I'm more likely to put holes in with this one, so I have to stay really mindful when I use it. Um, but I can get through the work a little bit faster than I can with this thing. So, I've already done the other side, and I've actually done a fair amount of work on this side already. I'm gonna do a little bit more, and then I'm gonna show you a really important part. I said that uh, I could use bathing him as a way to reveal more of the layer. But there's another another approach you can use. Um, before I get to that, this hair on his sides is pretty sparse, what needs to come out. You can finger pluck it. That's safe. That won't put a hole in. Might take a while. When the hair is pretty sparse like this, that's when I find a pumice stone is pretty good. I like to use the pumice stone um, in areas where it's sparse. Um, it, it won't put a hole in. You, it's not strong enough for you to grab enough to put a hole in. So especially these places, you know, down here at the, at the transition to the skirt. I'm just grabbing a few hairs at a time. And like I said, you can't put a hole in with this. So this is a good tool for getting sparse coat off the rotating coat. Thank you, Sue, for the good boy. Sometimes it feels like this part could go on for hours or forever. So if, if you're somebody who's never quite sure when to stop, set a timer and just so that you can stop. I know there have been times in the past where I just get so focused, so close in focused. I'm like, oh, I see three more hairs. I gotta pull them, I gotta pull them. And I stay in the area too long. And then when I back out, I realize, oh, time made that area a little bare. Maybe it'll put a hole in it, but maybe it a little bare. So if you wanna watch for that. Now, it comes a point where you've, you've really just gotten about everything that you can grasp with your hands. And since I'm pulling a, a big layer off, it's going to create his show coat in 10 weeks. Um, I want to get as much as I can. So pretty much if I can grab it without digging in, then I want to do that. Now there come a point where you really can't get anymore. And especially this time of year in the spring, part of what you start to find is it starts to look like there's not very much hair left. But if you look closer, you find it's because there's a lot of undercoat. A lot of undercoat right now. It's, um, it's March, it's the middle of March and they're all shedding like crazy. So something you can do to help reveal another layer is once you've stripped the layer off that's easy then go ahead and card out carding is the process of using a raking tool like a furminator or um, or a butter knife this type of uh, stripping knife um, my mickey does kind of the same thing although i don't like it as much for that Wait up, buddy. You can even use the Andis rake if you're careful, but I mostly don't use the Andis rake when I'm rotating the coat um, because it can cause a buildup of, of broken, broken coat. But if I'm really gentle and there's a lot of undercoat, it can help me get started. See, I pulled a fair amount of undercoat out already. The areas that are most likely to generate a ton of undercoat are the hips. Um, the neck, uh, the neck to shoulder transition, the top line, kind of in that order. So if I 
need to be able to get some more hair. I'm going to do some raking. And it flattens the coat down. So any place where you've been looking at it, you're like, oh man, there's no color. I took all the hair out. Well, once you card it, you start to realize that it only looked that way because so much of the hair was standing up because of the undercoat underneath. So I've just been in one little spot and I've gotten quite a bit. Um, carding is another place where you might want to hold the skin a little bit ahead of where you're using the tool so it doesn't bog down in the undercoat, it pulls it instead. If you're using a furminator, you have to really learn what it feels like in your hand. This is not actually a tool that you use by watching, by looking. I mean, you got to look to see where you're going to put it, but it's in the feel. Because in the feel is where you can tell if you're pulling through hair still, or if you've gotten most of the undercoat out, and that's an area now that's skin, or just hard coat and skin. You don't want to rake as hard there. So that's the other thing with the Furminator, if you get too gung-ho with it, and you haven't developed the fine touch of what that feels like, you can scrape the skin, and obviously that is not good for building your rapport with your dog. And when you're rotating the coat for a campaign or something like that, you know, you've got to do this pretty often, this interaction, this grooming. So, of course, you want to be mindful of um, doing it with your dog, not to your dog. Now, this time of year, one of the places where there's a ton of, of hair sometimes is just right here at the back of the pants. Um, so, I am going to use the and just rake there just a little bit to see if there's any big clumps that aren't on this side or on the other side. Um, here I use a, the butter knife a little bit. Um, actually, let me go back. So on the Furminator, you, you, put the, you put the blade parallel to the skin and perpendicular to the skin, and then you just pull straight back. Don't push it in and then yank back because that's what breaks the coat. You put it down and gently ease into some pressure. And that's, that's how you want to use the Furminator. If I'm going to card with a stripping knife, like the butter knife or my Mickey or whatever, the angle that you put the knife at is it's almost, it's not quite parallel to the skin, but it's just a slight angle. Um, unlike the Furminator, you do not, you, you do not do perpendicular. I'm doing more of this kind of an angle, this kind of an, an action, okay? He can be sitting, that's fine. I'm holding the skin, that, that helps it from bunching up in the tool. Stand up, buddy. I'm learning some weird holds so that you guys can see what I'm doing on video. <laughs> don't, don't feel like you have to hold the skin from the skirt. It's actually easier if I hold it here and I work close, but then, you know, you can't see anything I'm doing, so. Um, go slow. Keep it pretty close to parallel to the skin. A little at a time. And what ends up happening is once you've removed some of the undercoat, it reveals another layer of longer hair because it's not being pushed up by the undercoat. So that'll give you some more hair to pull on. Again, don't don't dig in. Just just grab what you can easily get to on the surface. There's a couple of places you always want to visit when you're when you're rotating. Um, the pepper and salt dogs, this area right here, this white mark, I don't know why, but the coat grows really fast there. So um, I do have to work that area pretty often or it starts to 
grow into this other area and it just has a kind of strange look because it's uh, longer and a different color than most of the coat. Okay, so still got some work I got to do on him to uh, get this layer off. I'll uh, probably bathe him tomorrow and then let his coat dry naturally. It'll puff up and then within 48 hours, because I don't want the coat to lay back down, and a hard coat will lay down pretty fast, uh, relatively speaking. Um, so within another couple of days, um, then I'll, I'll take that next layer off from the back. All right, if you have any questions about this process or um, you know, you, you'd like me to uh, step you through anything, if you're rotating a coat, um, and some of us, some of you will be with dogs that you're section stripping now, you're going to transition to rotating. Um, so just drop me a message. Um, let me know if you want to schedule a session. We can do uh, remote sessions and in person, wherever you're located, we can, we can work with that. And um, we'll keep working and I'll see you again soon.